guys, this is T from Driftwood Gaming, and I'm here with another RPG Maker MZ The Basics tutorial. This one is called How to Use the Event Editor. We're going to use the map that we built during our last tutorial, and we're going to add some NPCs to it to learn how to use the event editor. Okay, let's start with making an NPC that looks at the products down here at the bottom end of the store. In order to do this, we need to make sure that we are clicked on the event mode, not the map mode. So let's go ahead and double click on the map where we'd like to place our NPC. The event editor opens and you see the first thing that we can do is name our event. It's a really good idea to do this because then you can keep track of your events on this handy left pane over here that shows the name of each event that you have on the map. So we're going to call this event customer number one. The next section on the event editor is the note section. This is used primarily with plugins. If you have a plugin that needs to use the note section, it'll explain how in the help file. But in the meantime, we can use this for whatever we want. The next section are these tabs here on the top. We have new event page, copy event page, paste event page, delete event page, and clear event page. If we'd like to make a new event page, we just click this button and as you can see, we have two event pages down here. Now say I want to copy an event page. Let's put something on this. We would just click copy event page and then paste. Now we have two identical event pages. What if I decide I don't want this identical event page? Well, then I would just hit delete event page. And then let's say I decide I just want to start over on this one. I would hit clear event page. So let's get to making the event. First, let's look at the conditions section here. This is a very important section that you're going to use a lot in developing your game. We'll cover a couple of these things briefly in this tutorial, but we're going to go more in depth in future tutorials. As conditions for your event, you can use switches, variables, self switch, an item that the party has, or an actor that is in the party. We're mostly going to use self switches today, but again, in future tutorials, we're going to cover the other stuff more in depth. So in order to see our event on the map, we're going to want to add an image. So let's pick our customer. Double click on the image box and let's pick a person. This is going to be our customer. All right, so we have an event. Let's take a look. And there he is standing right where we put him. But he doesn't do anything yet. Let's go back in the event editor and make him a little more interesting. Just double click on the event while you're in event mode. And let's change his movement. Now there's two ways to change his movement. Right now we're going to go over the autonomous movement. The default type is set at fixed. You also have random, and if you set it to random, the customer will just walk around the available space randomly. It also has approach, and if you select this, it will approach the party. But we're going to use custom and make a custom route. This movement route page looks a lot like the one you'll use in the second method, except for one major difference. Here is a drop down list that usually shows the events on the map. But because we're doing the autonomous movement, it's set to only this event, therefore, there's no drop down list. So we're going to make him look at the items. How about we have him move to the right, turn up to look at the helmets. And then we're going to have him wait a second. And you see here, 60 frames equals one second. So we're going to have him look at them for one second. And then I'll have him move to the left twice, turn up, and wait again. Okay. And then move to the right, turn up, and wait again. And this will form a loop. We want to repeat these movements so that he continues to look at the wares while you're in the shop. We're going to select skip if cannot move. This way, if you get in the way of this character's move route, it will just skip the moves that it can't do and continue on the route when it can as if it hadn't been blocked. Also, if you're doing a move route for your player, you definitely want to use skip if cannot move because if your player gets blocked somehow, it'll lock up the entire game. And we're not going to click skip if cannot move because he's not going to affect you if he can't move where he needs to go. Another thing to keep in mind, you'll see here there's a speed setting and a frequency setting. The NPC's default speed is usually pretty good, but the frequency is kind of funny. We're going to take a look at it in the normal frequency and then we're going to change it to something that looks a little more fluid. Let's check it out. Now you see when he's walking to the left, he kind of stops and then he walks the rest of the way. But 
we want him to walk in a more fluid way without pausing in between steps. So we're going to change his frequency. We're going to change it in the custom move route. Click the top option in your move route and click change frequency. I'm going to set it to highest. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's much better. Now, before we move on, I want to mention one more thing about this. There's a really nifty button that has been added in MZ that wasn't in MV. If you're making this move route and you're having a hard time conceptualizing what it looks like in your head, you can go ahead and put in your move route and then preview it with this button. So it'll help you to make your move route without actually having to start a test game to see the character move. Very neat feature. Let's move on to the options section. You'll see that walking is already checked, and what that means is that he will make a walking movement as he moves across the map. If you were to uncheck this, he would kind of just slide across the map. If you click stepping, he'll continue to step no matter what he's doing. So even though he should be standing still, he'll be doing a little rain dance, which is really useful in some cases, but not when you're making an NPC usually unless you want him to be dancing. Then if you click Direction Fix, it makes it so even if your character interacts with the event, it will stay in the direction that you initially placed it. This is important if you're doing things like treasure chests or furniture or other characters. And then lastly is the Through option. If you check this, it removes the collision from the event and it can walk through anything and you can walk through it. The next thing we'll cover is the Priority. Usually with NPCs, you're going to want your priority to be same as characters, but you also have below characters. If your event is below characters, your party can walk on it and interact above it. Also, there's above characters. If it's set to above characters, the image will appear above the character and you can interact while you're below it. We're going to set him to same as characters. And then lastly is the trigger section. This section is what dictates how the event will interact with the player. Right now it's set to action button. If your player approaches this event and hits the action button, it will trigger the event. There's also player touch and event touch, and with these, when the event or the player are one tile away from each other, it will trigger the event. With an auto run event, it will run as soon as your player arrives on the map and it will continue until you cancel it. With auto run, your player is locked and can't move or interact with the game until the event is canceled. Parallel is a lot like auto run, except it can run in the background and your player is still able to move and interact with the maps. Too many parallel events may bog down your game, so be careful with them. We're going to set this one to Action Button. Now that we know how to set Autonomous Movement, we're going to change this back to Fixed, and I'm going to show you an alternate way to set a move route. Double click the first empty line in this Contents section, and this opens the Event Commands box. You'll see that there's three pages to this and a lot of options. We're not going to go over these options today, but we will in the future. Today we're just going to select Set Movement Route. Notice here that the drop down menu has an option in it. You definitely want to change this because the default is player, and since we want our NPC to walk and not our player when this event is triggered, we're going to change this to customer number one. Let's set the same movement route. So for this event, we are going to select Wait for Completion, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But we're also going to select Repeat Movements. So we selected Wait for Completion because the way this event runs is every frame, it's going to check to see if it needs to run this event. And if you don't put Wait for Completion, it will just run one frame of this movement route continuously. Therefore, your event won't move. You want to make sure that it doesn't run this again until the movement route is completed. So that's why we put a wait. In order to get our NPC to move, we're going to set this to parallel. Now when you use an autonomous movement, it runs like a parallel event and you don't have to do this. Since we're using the content section to set his movement route, we need to set this event to parallel. Hey, look at that. Looking good, guy. Awesome. All right, so now I want to make this guy a little more interesting. We're going to give him some dialogue. What will our customer say? Okay, so we're going to make our character a little more interesting now. And let's open it up. Now we're going to go back to autonomous movement because we'd like to be able to interact with this player, but also have a parallel moving event. So let's put this back to custom and delete this move route. 
Now we're going to set this to action button and we're going to give this guy something to say. Double click on the first empty line in your content section, go to page one of the event commands and click show text. This is where we put a dialogue in for our NPCs. Okay, now when we talk to our character, he should say this line to us. Let's give it a try. I wonder what helmet my daughter would like the most. Nice. Okay, so we're going to do some more complicated stuff here so that you can see how the switches work and what will happen if we set him to an automatic event. Let's check that out. Let's make him an auto run event and see what happens. I wonder what helmet my daughter would like the most. I wonder what helmet my daughter would like the most. I wonder what helmet my daughter would like the most. I think you get the idea. We're kind of stuck here. There's nothing we could do now. All right, so we don't want that. There's two ways that we could fix this. One, we could take him off of auto run, but we can also change the page. And this is where we're going to get into some switches. So say I want this dialogue to run as soon as I come into the store. I would keep it the way it is and add a switch to go to the second page and fix this whole auto run getting stuck business. So let's go to the event commands again and on page one there's something called a control self switch. We're going to select the control self switch and turn on self switch A. Now we're going to create a new page and the condition for this page to run is going to be that self switch A is on. So the way that event pages work is that the highest page that has the conditions met will always run. So right now, with no conditions, when we enter the store, this is the page that will run. As soon as this switch is turned on, page 2's conditions are met and therefore it will run instead. So since this one's not an auto run, this one won't lock up the players. So the dialogue runs as soon as we go into the map, but that's what we wanted. If we did it right, we should be able to go talk to him now. Yay! Oh, hello! Now let's add one more NPC. How about somebody over in this corner? We're going to go over how to do dialogues in more depth when we do our cutscene tutorial in the future. On this movement route pane, you'll notice that there are a lot of options. I'm just going to do a brief overview of these options. We're going to do more with this in future tutorials. So these kind of explain themselves. Move down, left, right, and up. This causes the character to move in these directions by one tile for each one that you select. Move lower left, lower right, upper left, and upper right are essentially the same thing except for it's one tile diagonally. Move at random will move your player one tile in a random direction. Move toward player will move it one tile toward the player. And away from player will be one tile away from the player. Then you have one step forward, one step backward, and jump. Let's take a look at jump. If you would like your character to jump straight up and down, you would keep your X and your Y axis set to zero. If you would like to have your character wait between movements, you can select wait. 60 frames in this section is equal to one second. Then you have turn down, turn left, turn right, turn up, turn 90 degrees right, 90 degrees left, turn 180 degrees, or turn 90 degrees right or left. These are pretty self-explanatory. If you use these, your character won't actually move, but it will change the direction that it's facing. Then we also have turn at random, turn toward the player, and turn away from the player. Also, you can choose to turn switches on or off during the move route. You can change your player or the event's speed and frequency. If you would like your walking animation to go on or off during your move route, you would use these options, as well as the stepping animation. You can fix the direction of your character at any point during a move route, and you can turn it on or off. You can also turn through on or off. And what through does 
is remove the collision from the event or your player so that they can walk through anything. If you set transparent on, your player will disappear and you have to turn it back off in order to get them to reappear. This is something I forget very often. It's a common thing to set transparent on when you do a transfer event outside of a map and forget to turn it back off when your player arrives at its new map. So keep that in mind. You can also change your player image. If you click this, it'll give you the option to select a character sheet. Although you can't specify the direction here, you can specify it in the other sections of the move route. Here you would change opacity. So if you'd like to have your player fade out, you can change the opacity anywhere from 0 to 255. 0 is completely invisible and 255 is completely visible. You can also change the blend mode. And there are four options for changing your blend mode. Normal, additive, multiply, and screen. And finally, you can play a sound effect or use a script call. Now, script calls are not something that I'm going to explain here. It's a little more complicated, but I'm sure we'll touch on that at some point in the future. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully the information on it was helpful to you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, come and hang out with us on the Discord. The link is in the description below. That's it for this tutorial. See you next time!